We have video that was released that shows the, well, the confessions of a murderer. Why would a landlord try to burn down his own rental property? The Chad Dorman jury, guess what? They're going to take a little trip. Three teens say not guilty in a horrible case here in Colorado. And then our dumb criminal of the day. Let's talk about it. Hi, lawyer. Lawyer. Good day, everyone. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk. Thanks for joining us. You know the drill. Subscribe if you haven't. Like if you do. Leave me a comment below. Hit that little bell for notifications. And remember, you can listen to us anytime on any of your favorite podcasting apps. All right, before we get to the docket for April 2nd, let's do a quick update. First, that's right, we're going live, gavel to gavel streaming of the trial of the state of Idaho versus Chad Daybell. We're in day two of jury selection. It's a little slow, but it is one of the most important parts of the trial. Next, we are live streaming the trial of George Kelly, that 75 year old rancher who is accused of uh, fatally shooting a Mexican citizen who was found dead on his ranch. Murder or self-defense? And remember, tonight, we will be going live at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Please join us. We have not done one in a while since I was basically in trial the entire month of March. We'll be discussing the Chad Day Bell case and the Brian Koberger case, and we'll take your questions on any other subjects you would like to talk about. Immediate fall on that show, we'll be doing our Patreon show uh, that we also have not done in a while. So please join us. And remember, if you're a Patreon, you can call in and um, you can ask your question that way. Please join us first. Yes, that's right, confessions of a murderer. I always wondered what murder felt like. That's what Brian Cohey told an officer in the uh, footage that was uh, captured. The moment that the 19-year-old from Colorado confessed to killing a missing homeless man and storing his severed head and his hands in his closet. Now, Brian Cohey was just 19 years old when he murdered 69-year-old Warren Barnes back in 2021. In February of 2023, Cohey was found guilty of first-degree murder and was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole here in the state of Colorado. Now, it has uh, come to light that uh, Cohey uh, nonchalantly admitted to Barnes' murder, telling the police officers that he was curious to know what killing someone would feel like. I've always wondered what murder felt like, he said. Now, the police responded to the home in uh, Mesa County, Colorado, back in March of 2021, after Cohey's parents made the gruesome discovery of Mr. Barnes' head and hands inside the closet. Well, in uh, body cam footage from his arrest, obtained and uh, uploaded, um, police questioned Cohey outside of his home. Uh, your parents have a couple of concerns about some stuff they may have found in your room. Any idea what it would be? Cohey responds, yeah, a human head from that fellow that went missing recently. The officer then asks, how did it end up? How did you end up with him? To which Cohey confessed, I murdered him. When asked with what, Cohey replied, a knife. He also identified the victim to the officer. When the officers asked why he had uh, killed him, Cohey simply said that he wondered what murder felt like. Um, as the footage goes on, Cohey's mother, Terry Cohey, was seen having to relive the moment that she discovered the decomposing head and hands. She said, quote, I was in his room cleaning up, putting some things away, and he has a rubber made container in his closet. And so I just kind of started digging through. I saw a plastic bag and I was like, what in the world does he have in here? I picked it up and it was heavy. I held it in my hands, maggots covering something. I carried it out to the sink it was double bagged, Miss Cohey explained, saying that she didn't open the second bag after the first layer and immediately called her husband. As Mr. Cohey's parents called 911, they admitted to the dispatcher that their son did display some fascination with the morbid. Well, the uh, footage also shows uh, Cohey telling investigators how he carried out the deadly attack on the homeless man. He said, basically, I was driving along and I see a shape here on the railroad track. So I'm like, huh, interesting. Uh, I'm like, that's a homeless person. So I grabbed my knife. I put on three layers of gloves because plastic gloves can uh, betray their users because they're so thin. So he took the knife, pulled the canvas back, and stabbed the man in his neck. He was panicking at first, and then um, he uh, repeatedly stabbed 
the gentleman. At the time of his murder, Mr. Barnes had been sleeping uh, rough near the uh, uh, Crosby Avenue located there in Mesa County. It was later revealed that Cohey attempted to get rid of the rest of Mr. Barnes' body at the Blue Heron boat ramp where his car got stuck. Now, at his 2021 trial, Cohey pled not guilty by reason of insanity, claiming that his diagnosed mental health disorder and environmental stressors caused him to become insane when he saw Mr. Barnes uh, laying there on those railroad tracks. Well, two psychologists examined Mr. Cohey for his insanity plea, and they concluded that he was not insane. A third psychologist on behalf of the defense disagreed, finding that Mr. Cohey was experiencing a psychotic episode that rendered him insane. Ultimately, the jurors of uh, Colorado found him guilty of murder, tampering with a deceased human body, and tampering with evidence. What the heck, ladies and gentlemen? Chopping people up. I remember when that case first broke, didn't know it was such a nonchalant um, confession that he gave because he was just curious as to see what it would be like to, to kill somebody. Well, um, I guess he knows now, and I don't think it was worth the cost of admission to the Department of Corrections for life without parole. Next, why would a landlord want to burn down his own rental property? So back on March 23rd, about 2.15 uh, a.m., police responded to a uh, call regarding a civil dispute. The police met a guy by the name of Ronald Frisbee. He's the landlord and he became upset with his tenants after they allegedly broke a washer and dryer machine in his unit. The police handled the situation and the officers left about 25 minutes later. Well, guess what? Officers were called back to the scene about 2.44 a.m. to a report of an arson. At the scene, police learned that um, Mr. Frisbee used a keypad door lock to enter the apartment he rented out to his tenants. He then allegedly lit a cardboard box on fire and the apartment filled with smoke. Now, a witness uh, extinguished the flames and the box was removed from the home and placed outside. Now, according to the police, the Akron Fire Department responded to the scene to confirm the flames were fully out and uh, they aired out the apartment for the tenants. Now, Frisbee was arrested and booked into the Lancaster County jail and bail was set at $75,000. He faces charges of arson, burglary, and two counts of reckless endangerment of a person. What the heck? You can't do a self-help eviction, right? If they break something, you add it to the bill to the next month's rent or you fix it, but you don't smoke somebody out by lighting a cardboard box on fire in the apartment. That's just not very smart. And more than likely, he's going to go to prison. Next, Chad Dorman. Remember that guy? Remember the guy accused of murdering his three sons? And well, his attorneys are asking the court to allow the jury to view the crime scene. Now, Mr. Dorman is accused of shooting and killing his three sons back in June of 2023. And a motion asks for the jury to view specific locations where the victims were believed to have been shot. The master bedroom, including the location of a gun safe, the children's bathroom and a field next to the home and the location of the fire department in relation to the home. The prosecution says allowing the jury to view those locations would give it a better understanding of the witness's testimony and photographic evidence that will be presented at trial. Now, as you may recall, Mr. Dorman is facing 20 counts, including multiple counts of aggravated murder, and his trial is scheduled to begin in July. Now, a judge ruled back on March 15th that police violated Mr. Dorman's Miranda rights during a custodial interview, and therefore his statement will not be permitted in the prosecution's case in chief. I'm not a big fan of scene views. Um, we saw it in the Murdoch case. I can only think of ever requesting it once, and it was a civil case that I was asked to try uh, with somebody, and the judge denied it. Normally, I mean, you have to tell a story, whether it be through the witnesses, through photographic evidence. I don't know what this judge will do, but I'm not sure it's worth going to see a house where I'm sure it's been thoroughly photographed unless there's something that the uh, prosecution thinks will give some new perspective on the crime scene. Not a big fan of that, but hey, we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty much of the mindset that, hey, nobody listens to me anymore. So what does it really matter? Give me my opinion. Anyway, next, a terrible case here in uh, Colorado. So three teenagers that have been charged with killing a 20-year-old woman by throwing a rock um, through her windshield as she drove 
underneath a uh, bridge. Well, they've all pled not guilty to the murder. Now, the offer in these cases must be terrible. Um, the, all the boys, two of the three of the boys have confessed, and it's not a who done it. So Alexa Bartel was 20 years old when Joseph Koenig, Nicholas Mitch, Carol Chick, and Zachary Quack, all 18, allegedly hurled a landscaping rock at her car uh, there in Jefferson County, Colorado, which is just on your way as you head up to the mountains. This took place back in April of uh, 2023. Anyway, all three of the teens appeared in district court on Monday, and they pled not guilty to first-degree murder with extreme indifference. Now, Koenig is also facing four new charges of attempted murder and assault for a separate rock throwing incident as well. Now, the prosecutors allege that the men had thrown landscaping rocks and hit six other cars that night, but all of the other drivers were uninjured. Bartell was on the phone with a friend when a rock smashed through her car windshield, and then the phone conversation went quiet. Friend tracked her phone and drove to the location to find her dead in the car, which had ravined um, off of the road and into a field. Now, the men will be tried separately. Carol Chick um, is going to go to trial in June. Uh, four new charges of uh, two counts of attempted first-degree murder and two counts of attempted second-degree murder have also been brought against Koenig after two more victims came forward for rock-throwing incidents back in February of 2023. Now, on Monday, a uh, prosecutor said that Carol Chick had admitted he had he and Koenig had thrown rocks on 10 nights last year, but had only caused property damage. An arrest affidavit um, after the fatal attack, Quack told the others, we have to go back and see that. He then allegedly took a photo of her car as a memento. Now, a friend of the trio told police he watched them several hours earlier as they loaded a truck with landscaping rocks taken from a Walmart parking lot. And the friend of the three claimed the three boys picked up as many as they could possibly carry. He said he knew something bad was going to happen, so he asked Koenig, Carol Chick, and Quack to take him home. Good on him. Otherwise, he'd be spending probably the rest of his life in prison, too. Anyway, the three alleged killers then patrolled roads in the area um, and searched for passing cars to target. Now, Quack says that they would... Uh, use marine terms when launching the rocks, adding Mitch would say something like, contact left, before Joseph would throw the rock at a car on the left side of theirs. He said the rock which killed Bartell made a very loud noise like a rail gun when it struck her windshield, and a bloodstained rock was discovered next to the young woman's yellow Chevy Spark. Now, a friend described Koenig as someone who likes creating chaos and would often act destructively. Um, Joseph and Mitch were talking about them now being blood brothers, and they could never speak of the incident, Mr. Quack said in his interview with the police. Now, the three reportedly met up the following day, so they make sure they got all their stories straight. That didn't quite work out. Anyway, Carol Chick and Quack were interviewed by detectives and each gave, let's say, differing accounts of who threw the rock. Koenig refused to speak to the police. Now, the affidavit alleges that um, one of the suspects said he felt a hint of guilt and revealed the men were uh, traced uh, using uh, data from cell phone towers in the area. It added that they had thrown rocks at vehicles on about 10 different occasions since February. Six other cars were damaged. Two more drivers were injured. Uh, the night that uh, Bartell was hit and killed. You're starting to notice a bit of a theme here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what it is, Mr. Cooey, Ms. these three young gentlemen. Um, no respect. No respect for human life. And why would they think that is was even a smart thing to do? I know we've all done done stuff as teenagers, thank God, we didn't hurt anybody or kill somebody. But if my parents had found out we were doing something like that, I'm telling you, the Department of Corrections would have been a safer environment for me than going home. Bottom line, I don't know what is going on, but it seems like the young kids of today have no concept, no respect for the dignity of human life. And then they go do stupid things like this. And guess what? 
then they wind up in prison for the rest of their life. It's a tough, tough case, ladies and gentlemen, tough case um, for everybody involved. Ms. Bartell, obviously deceased, her family wants justice. Um, she should get justice. These kids were doing something completely reckless, and that is the definition of murder, extreme indifference, engaging in conduct which is so dangerous that it's very likely that death will result. Throwing rocks over a bridge over a highway is no different than shooting a firearm down a crowded street. It is reckless. It's extreme indifference to the sanctity of human life. And unfortunately for those three gentlemen, they are going to spend probably a good chunk, if not the rest of their lives in prison. Their little spidey senses should have tingled like their friend and said, you know what? Take me home. That friend will probably use that as an example for the rest of his life to make good decisions, right? Remember when you dropped your kids off at school? What'd you tell them? I love you. Make good decisions. Make good decisions. Please go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up for a background subscription service. You'll be happy you did. If there's anyone out there you were ever curious about, what was in their background, now is the time to do it. If you're going to get involved with somebody, now is the time to do it. When you go to crimetalksearch.com, you put in the name, literally millions of public records are searched and a report is generated. And it's going to give you a report. If they have multiple social media accounts, you're going to find it. If they have multiple phone numbers, multiple email addresses, it's going to be found. And more importantly, you're going to get information regarding criminal history. Hopefully the person you're searching has none whatsoever, but if it's there, it's going to be found. You're going to get everything you'd want to know, whether you're going into business or whether you're going into a personal relationship, you're going to be able to find out the information you want to know. So go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up today. You'll be happy you did. Our dumb criminal of the day, well, she too has made some dumb decisions. Please meet this uh, Florida woman who claims that she was playing a game when she allegedly walked into a Walmart store and stole as much merchandise as she could possibly get away with. Now, a concerned citizen contacted the uh, police uh, last week of a report of a shoplifter at a Palm Coast Walmart. The woman was later identified as Amber McCann, and she allegedly filled her shopping cart full of items and walked out of the store without paying. It's just a game. So anyhow, the uh, police uh, officers caught up with them, and it's all captured on a body cam. And when they ask her which car she put the merchandise in, she claims she just put it in the items and her purse in a random vehicle because she saw the uh, police coming. She went on to explain that she was playing a game called 21. It's basically like you go and you steal all this stuff. You can steal, and uh, you get out without getting caught, she said. And I did it one other time, but I, I got caught this time. So now I got to figure out where my purse is and where my merchandise is because now I got to give all the merchandise back to Walmart. Huh, bygones, no big deal. Anyway, Ms. McCann insisted the game is really fun. Maybe the officer should give it a try sometime. Well, Ms. McCann, uh, let's say she had a little bit of a change of heart uh, when the uh, Officers realized that the car that she had put the items in was not some random car, but it was actually rented by her boyfriend. And um, when they tried to determine the dollar figure and whether uh, there was enough to send Miss McCann to jail, she had an answer for them. There's a lot of stuff, she said. And when the deputies opened that car, so many items fell out when they opened the door in the back seat. The merchandise was not the only thing they found. In the trunk, there was a safe containing a one ounce silver bar um, and rounds copper bars, and uh, one gram platinum bar, according to the police report. Yeah, I'm sure that's all hers, right? People stealing stuff at Walmart, you know, they're they're into uh, trading fine metals, I'm sure. Or burglary. Anyway, Ms. McCann stated, who gives an F anyway? It's just material stuff, as she yelled from the window as she was being taken away. Well, yes, Ms. McCann, it is just stuff, but it's other people's stuff. And you can't take other people's stuff without their permission. Otherwise, it's theft. And when you go into their building and you go into their home and you go in there with the intent to commit a crime therein, it is burglary. Anyway, Ms. McCann um, was charged with theft between $750 and $5,000 and a sundry of drug charges. And guess what? She remains in jail on a $34,000 bond. <laughs> I bet she wishes she had some of that stuff to help her get out of jail. The uh, police department did say that uh, she may have skipped the uh, checkout lane at Walmart, 
But uh, she went through the uh, express check-in at the Green Roof Inn with a free set of designer bracelets, a.k.a. handcuffs. Yes, Miss McCann, you are our dumb criminal of the day. I don't know what it is, ladies and gentlemen, a complete lack of respect for law and order and other persons and other persons things. Maybe we'll talk about that tonight when we go live. Please join us 6 p.m. Mountain Time tonight right here. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.